Africa's team, he's got the offensive tools to be able to deal with it from both angles, you know, if you look at it, it's going to be. It's finally time, guys. All good things worth waiting for. Time to hop into our first top eight match here in Honolulu. Don Dozo out the bat is going to be hitting the field. Iron Hands on the opposing end. Both trainers bringing the restricted. It's going to be Maridon v Maridon. Yeah, this is a tricky bold position straight off the bat for Luca, especially. I mean, he's got access to that fake out. It could go onto the Don Dozo. That's an easy slot to stop moving this next turn to get that flinch. But the Maridon becomes a bit of an issue because do you fire an attack? If you're expecting the Tatsugiri to come in just into the Dondozo, if you do that, you're kind of leaving the Maraidon potentially open on the field to launch back with the Draco Meter of its own. And if you're Luca, you don't have that Assault Vest. You don't have that immediate kind of buffer to take that damage. Even though the Chen Wei Maraidon isn't boosted by the Choice Specs, it's still going to be hitting super effective damage. Do we see a Terrestrialization to get around that from Luca, where you go for that Fairy Terrestrialization early on? Commit to that. If you do that, then the Earthquake becomes a little bit more problematic later on. But Looks like we are seeing. All right, hold on, folks. We're going to wait a little bit. Like I said, all good things worth waiting for. We're going to take another second because we're excited for this one to be a cooker as we figure out what's going on for this stage here. We got to make sure everything is in order, right? We're just going to take a few moments to get this resolved. I've also just heard as well uh, that Lucas. Yeah, uh, yeah, so here we go. We'll get back into it. I think there's just some technical difficulties there. We'll get the just, breaking news yeah. as soon yeah, as we yeah. have it. Do not We're kind of waiting with you to hear <laughs> what's happened, what's going on. But um, yeah, we'll be back into the match soon. I guess it gives us a bit more time to kind of debate. Uh, and now we know. Drama. Yeah, because we now know what these players are kind of leading with, right? Yeah. Like, Luca is obviously confident that the Iron Hands is going to be a really good play into this matchup, given that initial fake out it's going to give potentially an option to trust lies but then there is that mind game between the two maridons leading right and i think yeah. chenway did really well in that situation to throw his maridon onto the field next to that dondozo because it does leave the question right if you yeah. go for an attack into that slot and the tatsugiri comes in the command ability activates goes into its mate dondozo's mouth and gets the omni boost you're wasting an attack and you kind of stuck out on the field against this boosted Dondozo the next turn, yes, you can slow it down for one turn. Yeah. But the thing is, not attacking into it, like we mentioned there, and the Maraidon being left alone is the most dangerous thing. So you feel like you have to be a bit bit cautious here. You have to cover bases. And I don't think you can leave the Dondozo in a position where you don't fake it out either. I mean, you can, but... Um, it's tough it's, because... It's tough. Yeah, because if you want to fake out the Dondozo, and then all of a sudden the Maraidon does go on the offensive, that is a Dondozo, that, sorry, that is a Marauder, and you definitely don't want to be staring down unless you want to commit your own terrestrialization from the get-go. And even then, something like a powerful switch. So that could be, be tough. Yeah, and I think the other thing to talk about as well there is if you don't fake out into the Dondozo, it does have the order of attack, which could, if you don't terrestrialize on Lucas' side of the field, do super effective damage, which is really, again, an easy way to deal with the Maraidon if you don't click the right options at that point <laughs> in the game. And it, I think it shows, although Shemwe has obviously some limitations with what he can do with the choice <laughs> items that he's picked throughout the team, I think he really picked a really perfect lead here to go into Luca to give him so many questions, so many things to decide upon. And, you know, you get those decisions wrong and a game can kind of slip away from you very, very quickly. And that's the dangerous thing when you're going up against these Dondozo Tatsugiri teams. And despite the fact that they're not the biggest representation out here at the World Championships, they are teams that have found that level of success because especially on that pivotal turn where it's the does the Tatsugiri, does the Tatsugiri not swap in, that's where trainers can really find themselves on the back foot on just one single turn. We've seen how games have really just turned on their head with one protect that maybe just you weren't planned for and that was a double in one move and that Tatsugiri being able to be the perfect distraction to let the Dondos go crazy is nuts and if you get that wrong well then the Maraidon can also just style on you. That's so true as well I we're just hearing now that there was a bit of an issue with the the start of that match uh, with the team being locked in so the players will be starting 0-0 will be getting into the match in a moment so uh, it will be starting from fresh there's no actual issues with anything to do with the players just a bit of an issue technically on the technical side of things like i said add to the drama to the world championships baby <laughs> but <laughs> now we have to think about going back into this match with where the trainer's mind might be at because with this lead coming on out do we still think that 
on paper that this is the best lead or is it more so you got to get that 50 50 from the get-go correct i think from chen Wei's point of view i think it, it it's a great lead because i think it gives luca a lot of things to think about and it's it's really the balls kind of in luca's court to say where are you going to commit right what are you going to do this next turn because there's lots of options there for both players to do right but there is immediate threats on luca's side of the field i think with the assault vest that uh, Cheng Wei has, it does give him a little bit more of a buffer maybe against some of those Mariah on attacks. And there's also the, the mind game as well of, does Chen Wei go for the terrestrialization on the Mariah to try and catch the Draco Meteor? Mm -hmm. Or does Luca go for the terrestrialization to catch a potential order up from the Dondoza if the Tatsugiri comes in? Or if that Mariah sticks around on the field and launches its own Draco Meteor? It's, it's, it really is one of those questions where I think you do have the iron hands to alleviate a little bit of that but you've got to get that decision right and I think maybe for Luca I don't think it's a bad lead because I think that offensive pressure you've got with the iron hands I think applies a lot of pressure to Chen Wei's side of the field and again you don't really want to leave your Dondozo sitting duck in that situation to yeah. take a fake out or a double up into because it's so easy for Luca to say okay well I'm just gonna fake you out and volt switch into you Reminder as we're about to head back into this game here. This is just 0-0, fresh game reset, no shenanigans. We're kicking it from the get-go. Let's pretend the last five minutes didn't happen here. For the first time, we're about to talk, hop into top eight here at the World Championships. All right, Genue, again, Maridon. It's going to be Don Dozo over on Luca. A little bit. We're going to see the same. It's interesting as well here. I think one thing to pick up on is Luca's Maridon and uh, the Hadron engine activated before the one on Chenwei's side. So does that indicate that Luca has the faster Maridon? That's something to keep in mind for yeah. the rest of this game, I think, as well. Because if you do have the faster Maridon, especially in an end game situation, it could really help you close out how both players approach this. All right, well, it's a swap. Maridon's leaving. Dondoza's best friend is the Tatsugiri, and it will be joining it for start off turn number one here. Commander, it's been a bit since we've gotten to see a Dondozo, <laughs> but Dondozo gobbles up that Tatsugiri, and we're about to get boosts galore. The speed, the attack, the defense, special defense. The Dondozo is looking to go all out offensive. And on the opposing end, you have to watch out. But Terrastalization is going to be hitting the stage as well. Dondozo, baby. Yeah, it's going for that grass Terrastalization. Get rid of that weakness to the electric threat that's on Luca's side of the field. Really great defensive Terrastalization here. But it is going to be susceptible to this fake out here from the Iron Hands. The other it slot. is it going into the Mariah on those sort of voids it as we see a Volt Switch come out into that Dondozo, taking that so comfortably. You can't disrespect the pressure that the Maridon puts out there, but the swap means nothing happens into that slot. Tatsugiri takes no hit, and Dondoza will be able to act on this turn. It takes a little bit of damage, but Whimsicott hitting the field is going to make sure that you're not taking an Earthquake oh. onto the Maridon, but Iron Hands, that attack boost is doing a lot to it. You do not appreciate that whatsoever. You called it, Sierra. You said that Earthquake was going to be a big threat to these electric types on Lucas side of the field, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Chen Wei playing an absolute masterstroke in this first turn, getting the Tatsugiri in, going for that Earthquake, the terrestrialization all in on this first turn, and getting some really good returns here. The Whimsicott obviously in that position where it can take attacks a lot better, but that Iron Hands, really threatened has to get out of there as soon as possible we're doing a little bit of a pivoting game for luca ogre pawn heart flame jumps back out onto the field is encore if this dondoza wanted to do anything different i got bad news from you i think we're about to see a lot of earthquakes on our horizon we got to see how much it did last time onto the whimsicott not nearly too much but ogre pawn neutral hit will be bringing it down to about half so sure maybe you're not changing moves but kind of working out for you right now yeah i mean one hand it's great you've got two grass types on the field i mean you're getting hit neutrally on the ogre pond because of the part fire typing but you you're not going to be able to take too many of these right encoring the dondos into that's great but how many more earthquakes are you going to be able to take you see the ogre pond going down to six hp here the moon blast coming out from the whimsicott doing some decent damage and an ivy cudgel following up going to be super effective but not enough to take down this dondozo 
I'm just looking at the damage stacking up, and the fact that you are Encore locked does mean that you can't go for Protect, so you can't be spacing out the attacks to slowly get a little bit more back. And I think this is where we're going to really, really see what Luke has been setting up here. The Whimsicott has locked the Don Dozo and set the Tailwind. So sure, there is going to be a double KO on this turn, or at least oh. the one, but this will just get it right here. The critical, the critical hit is going to drop the Don Dozo. That is a huge turn here, and Luca fishing for the critical hit. It's got a high chance of landing, and he gets it. Like you were saying, Sierra, setting up this position where the Encore it is doing a lot with that Earthquake every turn. You don't have too many turns, but I think Luca's plan was, okay, I'm going to get it to the point where it is going to be knocked able be knocked out by the Maridon if it does come in. If I lose the Whimsicott, I get my Tailwind up, I'm going to be the fastest thing on the field. I'm going to be able to do some really impactful damage. Now, the Tatsugiri has left that Dondozo, so that will be re-entering the battlefield, of course, and that has got the Choice Golf. But with that Tailwind in effect, things are looking pretty good for Luca now with that two-time speed boost. Sometimes the crit lands when the crit lands, and with that increased critical hit chance playing for that liked it and even if not i think the damage that you were even doing with just a regular ivy cudgel is still doing a nice amount that if there was the double ko the maradon can start putting a lot of pressure on but now we're onto this path of hey you've already dealt with this dangerous don dozo now let's see if you can bring go through the dragonite reminder this one is choice band locked so what it locks into right here right now is going to be it and even if it is outsped since there is no ferrigraph you can go for something like that extreme speed no, and that's what we're going to see. The Olgapon just scout out what this Dragonite's going to decide to do, and it is locking in with that extreme speed now into the Whimsicott, picking up an easy knockout. But the same can be said about the Tatsugiri. It does have that Choice Golf item. What is it going to lock into? It is going to be that Muddy Water. Good way to get a little bit of damage here, or at least try to in these upcoming terms. Since again, Choice locked. That was a choice, and you're locked with it. Murado joining the field will be taking hit well. You could also be fishing for those accuracy drops if you get the opportunity to fire off another move. This Maridon, well, it's got the choice specs itself and it has the help of the Tailwind. So going on to this turn, I think we'll finally really get to see the power that this Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam can do to the two Dragon types across the field. Yeah, it's gonna be a strong attack. You gotta realize though that the Dragonite does have that multi-scale ability. So as long as its health is at full, it is gonna take a little bit less damage from this initial Dazzling Gleam. <laughs> but will the Tatsugiri be able to take it? Probably not. I think with that Choice Specs item, you know, the Hadron Engine active, you're gonna have the Terrestrialization boosting it even further. So Tatsugiri looks like it might be at the end of this game but the Dragonite still has access to that extreme speed of course can get some nice damage onto the field and potentially disrupt things maybe remove that Ogopon after it did protect that last turn this is where the follow me is going to be coming on in so sure you're going to be speedy but all of your attention is going to be onto that ogre pond and six hp that is not the damage or the impact that you would want in on this turn now we'll get to see that maride on freshly terra fairy fire off this dazzling gleam the multi-scale for the dragonite but the tatsugiri without any of that help is going to be a clean one hit ko and the dragonite took a lot of damage as well yeah and the nice thing here is now you've got this iron hands to bring in if you're luca you've got that active fake out the dragonite isn't in focus it doesn't have the resistance to that flinch possibility so you can stop that extreme speed this next turn and the maraidon on chenwei's side of the field cannot terrestrialize into that fairy type so it is going to be susceptible to those dazzling gleams that luca has locked into looking like it's going to be a bit of an uphill struggle now for Chen Wei to get any foothold back into this match. Although you've got to say, the Electro Drift is still there. The Electro Train is still active on the field for Chen Wei. So these Electro Drifts are going to be hitting pretty hard into Luca's own Maraidon. If we get to that point. We don't. I, I think we <laughs> get to see the writing on the wall as we are going to be clicking that forfeit button and sending it into a game two. What a great answer Luca had. I mean, you can look back and say critical hit. Thing is, it's an increased crit chance, and even without that, setting up that tailwind, that would have been a lot of damage that this Maradon was still going to be able to do into the Don Dozo. You had the choice specs that you could just fire off a Draco Meteor into. You could you Encore lock it, so you could have just been fine. So even though it made it a smidge easier with that critical hit, I think there was still a really, really good way of making sure that you had damaged the Dondozo enough to that point that you could still handle it. Yeah, I think that's completely the right thing. I think without the critical hit, the Maraidon just comes onto the field, uses Dazzling Gleam the next turn, the Tailwind's still up, and you take 
take it down because it's so close to being knocked out. It's going to be Encore locked. Unless the Encore did end that next turn, of course, and that throws another spam into the works. But I, I think that the main thing here is you're using a move that has a high critical hit chance. You're using it enough times, you're going to land it. And fortunately for Luca, got it at the, the right time. And even without the critical hit, it, like you said, it dealt a significant amount of damage. So, yeah, the Maradon would able to push on forward. And when we got to this later part of the game, that Tatsugiri that has that choice scarf since that hotel in one set, this is a Tatsugiri that in other situations could be really quite scary, whether it's going for that speed control or even just these muddy waters. And it never even got this opportunity, that Terra Fairy dazzling gleam in off huge and the dragonite even though it took that initial hit because of the multi-scale well then where do you go from there when all of a sudden you have an ability that allows you to get faked <laughs> out and you can't really do too much no and that's the problem i think both both that assault vest and the choice band on the dragonite there i think you kind of both both your Pokemon, if your Chen Wei, are kind of setting targets at that point where the fake out could go into either and you could disrupt because the extreme speed from that range probably isn't picking up the Maridon. Uh, it might be enough to get the Iron Hands, but is that really the Pokemon that you want to remove? I mean, yeah, at that point, if you're not having the Terrestrialization on it, we missed that opportunity. Couldn't do too much. So heading into now game two. Have to see where Shen Yue wants to be swapping this one up, and it ain't going to be with the lead as Don Zosa makes appearance yet again. Of course, this is where the mind games come in. Both players leading exactly the same. Do we see that fake out into the Maridon slot this time from Luca into Chen Wei's Maridon to prevent that? Or do we see that switch once again from Chen Wei to get that Don Dozo set up, commit to that terrestrialization early on, and then a similar sort of play kind of play out from there? Or do we see maybe Chen Wei take advantage of the potential threat of the fake out and keep them a ride on on the field. I mean, we talk about when you're up a game that you could be making these risks, but this is the opportunity well down that you could be making a huge play on this turn. If you think that, hey, my Don Dozo got to do a lot of damage last time around, they might not expect that. You could then try and fire off with this Maridon. Don Dozo, that is the protect. And the Iron Hands targeting into it, it's gonna do nothing. Genue will have an opportunity to attack with the Maridon, but maybe oh. not the Draco Meteor into the slot. No terrestrialization means a one hit KO to be kicking it off. That is a massive turn here from Luca, and just like you called it, going, taking the opportunity where that fake out was going into the Don Dozo here and trying to fish for some utility out of the Maridon on Genue's side of the field. But Luca saying no. We identified earlier in game one that Lucas Maridon outsped, got that Hadron engine active before and it happened this time again. So Luca identifying that, taking full advantage, removing that big threat from the field. You can see the look on Shenyue's face, losing your restricted right away is so disastrous, especially too when you do have that Terry Fair that Terra Fairy, that is something that could have been clicked to resist. Maybe wanting to save it for the Dondozo, but now you're down a Restricted, you're down a Pokemon, and you have a lot of momentum to be made kicking it up. Tatagiri swaps in, Commander Dondozo gets those boosts yet again and really has to put them to good use. Yeah, and, and you know, I, if you chose what Luca locked into the Dondozo this turn, ignoring the Dragonite, which did switch out for the Tatagiri. The Dondozo is going to be a lot more potent now with that boost from the Tatsugiri, but no terrestrialization here. The Draco Meteor coming out doing huge damage once again, boosted by that Choice Specs item. Wow, it's negative two, negative four now, and it did not look like it'll take a lot of damage in return. But that's damage that you will gladly take because this double up low kick coming out from the Iron Hand is deleting this big bad Dondozo. Two turns into the match. Genuinely down to final two Pokemon. This is absolutely outrageous here from Luca, just not holding any stops back. Really taking full advantage of everything that happened in that game one, flipping it on its head, reading Chen Wei, and really limiting those options now with just the Dragonite and that Tatsugiri. One thing you would say that Chen Wei does have at their disposal is the terrestrialization that they could still take advantage of, but Luca has the Pokemon advantage. Four Pokemon to two, it's gonna be a hard uphill struggle. This has to be the best terrestrialization of your life and not spent in this moment. Extreme speed, the lock-in for the Don Do for the Dragonite as Muddy Water is finally gonna claim the first AO and get a critical hit onto the Whimsicott, just slowly chipping away. And this is gonna be the two moves we'll see for the rest of the match. And with the Whimsicott hitting the field, it will be able to set up Tailwind over onto this next turn. So any speed advantage we are looking at with that Tatsugiri is all of a sudden gonna be gone. Yeah, this gets a little bit tricky though, because now if you are Luca, you've got the Tailwind, yeah, but do you have the firepower to take down the Tatsugiri that's now locked into the 
Muddy Water, and then obviously the Dragonite as well that can kind of ignore the Tailwind advantage here because you can just pick things off. You can pick the Whimsicott off. If you want this turn, you can get around that Moonblast threat. So Chengwei not in the worst spot here, where I think when you look at the options left on Lucas out of the field, I think losing the Maraidon was probably not the thing that he wanted to do, but it was in range of that Dragonite when it's locked into that extreme speed anyway. It's whether we get to see where this Dragonite targets if you want to try and take down the Whimsicott onto this turn as Terrasalization, Ogre Pond looking to output the most damage it can do and bring out that Hearthflame Mask. Plus one to the attack we'll see on this turn thanks to that in body aspect. Of course, it's going to be moving a little bit later on because the extreme speed coming out first is going to make sure the Whimsicott doesn't get the opportunity to speed things up. And we still have to get through a turn of this muddy water. It's all about the connects. That's what we're going to be eyeing up, and it will. We drop the grass typing. We're taking a lot of damage, but Woodhammer comes on out. And it is enough to pick up the Tatsugiri, a one-hit KO, but I think the recoil will probably be enough to take down this Ogre Pond. So it is going to be, yes, it looks like that is it. Iron Hands up against this Dragonite from Chenwei's side of the field. Have we found a window of opportunity after this disastrous first turn to bring this into a game three? One Pokemon apiece and Iron Hands down to less than half its health. You get the attack raise because of that Cork Drive, but this Dragonite is at full health. You'll be able to have the fake out to break the multi skill, but you're still already taking so much damage, and the choice spent extreme speed. I don't think you can take this down. We might be going to a game three. I think it looks like that's exactly where we are going. The electric terrain disappearing, that cork drive boost disappearing. The iron hands looking not in the best of positions. Has broke that multi scale, but can it take an extreme speed? It can. Can it knock out with the wild charge? It's going to be very close. And Dragonite able to take that pretty comfortably. The only KO happening on all that turn is going to be the Iron Hand taking itself down thanks to that recoil. And we are going to a game three. No restricted needed, apparently. <laughs> right on. <laughs> oh, it, it left and the rest were able to do it. I, What a match. The, it was KO after KO in Luca's favor. <laughs> that Maraidon gone, Dondozo gone, and still Shenyue finds a window to take it to top eight. I love the World Championship. This is what it's all about. That was so fast, so furious, and we're going to a game three. I mean, like you say, you think it looks so bad for Chenwe, but then you realize, okay, you've got that Dragonite Tatsugiri on the field. You're locked into that extreme speed, and you've got the the scarf there you can by getting that initial extreme speed onto the whimsicott and getting that muddy water put in range for another one preventing the tailwind and then from there it was just so close so fine margins for chenwe to close this one up especially after luca had such a great start and really read into what chenwe was potentially going to do that first turn as well this is about to be the nastiest read that you have to be making in the game, the turn one of this game three, because now you know, for Shenyue, you now know that, hey, this Rhydon's not scared of going for this Draco Meteor. Do I Trastalize? But Luca, you don't want to be then Draco Meteoring into it. So then what do you do instead? Do you fake out and hit to the other slot? Because all of a sudden you could be on the wrong end of things. This is about to be <laughs> crazy. This is going to be one of the best matches so far this weekend, and it all comes down to this game three. Who will be progressing our first top four here at the 2024 World Championships? Oh, it all comes down to this. Two very, very worthy trainers. Such an insane set that we've had so far. And hopping into this, I cannot wait to see how this has been shaking. <laughs> going to be shaking up. Let's head into this game. We're not going to be wasting any time here. Ooh, we're, we're kicking it with the same leads. We're not switching anywhere. We are going to see maybe a little bit of an iteration from Luca here coming out. But the Dondozo, there's a threat that we've said it time and time again. Does the Tatsugiri come in? Do you leave your Maraidon out on the field to try and take advantage of the threat of that Tatsugiri? Catch Luca off that way? Or do you just go down the straightforward route with that fake out? This might be the call of the weekend. What do these trainers do on the first turn? And Terrasalization from the Iron Hands is going to be the first. Terra Bug 
Make sure you're not taking too much damage from that Earthquake, and I think that's a little spoiler of what to come, but you're not taking any damage. Protect yet again. Is the Maraudon from Shenyue going to be on the wrong end of things? The Faco means it's not going to be attacking. Now the Draco Meteor instead targeted into the Nondozo. Shenyue gets to keep. They're restricted. That's a really big protect there because the Dondozo otherwise with that Maraidon staying out onto the field, a really nice play to be able to just protect it. And then you've got this nice turn where you know what that Maraidon and Lucas side of the field's locked into. So you can play around it slightly better that way. You know as well that this Einhans is now a bug type. So the <laughs> Earthquake is also not going to be as effective. So do you lock in with something else or do you forego the Dondozo until later on in this match? Maybe bringing in that Dragonite if it is something in the back. There's always a risk though that you do that and you fall into that Draco Meteor path, which Luca has already identified as the way that he wants to go with his Mariadon. That's going to be the issue, but it's going to be a Mariadon that swaps out as the Dondozo most likely wanted to go on to the offensive this turned around. Last time it was at the Protect. This time around, Tatsugiri for yet again that commander. We've seen the animation three times around, and you all should be real familiar. There is some boost galore. Looking to make sure the damage you do on this turn is doing the most. Yes, we did get to see the Terra bug from the Iron Hands, but you can still pressure a lot of damage into this Maridon since the Terrasalization has been spent, and you know that it's not going to be a Volt Switch, but that is still so much damage. I mean, on out. It'll be the order up instead with no terrestrialization. The attack boost, it does a lot, but not enough for that KO. And I think the Dondozo is about to go down. Wild charge, but instead, oh. into the other slot. Oh, he's picked into the wrong slot. The Dondozo gets to have another turn here. The Draco Mia doing some big damage. I'm surprised that the Maridon was able to survive that order up super effective into Lucas' side of the field. Oh, if the only had went for the Maraidon, but no, really well played from Chen Wei, taking advantage and not committing to the Trasalization either, as we just see a protect from that Dondozo. With the protect and the amount of damage coming out from the Draco Meter, you are negative two despite that choice specs. I'm wondering if you're trying to get ahead of this Tatsugiri jumping on out and trying to get this damage on in with how it's staggered out. This Wild Charge is going to be the click yet again. We're going to get a little bit of Lefty's recovery, and that's what I'm going to be keeping an eye out for. We saw how much damage that last Draco Meteor did. I still think it could pick up the KO, but it could be close. And you are also eyeing up that potential of a miss. And see, we're seeing the purposeful target here. With that unaware ability, though, ignoring those drops, that's why the Draco Meteor will continue to do that damage onto the Dondozo. So even though it has taken that minus two, not affecting the Dondozo so much, but removing it here allows this Iron Hands now to pick up the big damage onto that Tatsugiri and giving Luca a huge lead in this game three. We never wanted the Dondozo to go down a couple turns prior. We wanted to wait for this moment. So the double KO on Luca's end to put him so far ahead in this match as Genue again back against the wall to Pokemon. The Maridon coming back out. Dragonite going to be joining it. We know that he can make his way back on through this, but Luca's in such a commanding spot. He is, yeah, but the one thing he would say is that we saw how well Chen Wei came back in that last game with just two remaining Pokemon. You've got the Dragonite as well, multi-scale intact, going to be able to take a flurry of attacks, and this is why we're going to see Luca reposition. Does he give up his Maraidon so easily this turn to an extreme speed, or does he try and preserve it for later on in this game? Oh, looks like it's sticking around at least this first go-around and terrestrialization for the opposing end of the field. If you are looking at a Draco Meteor going this way, you might as well not bother. It's Terra Fairy. Great defensive type in this situation as the Draco oh. Meteor instead into the Dragonite. Super effective, but the X of the multi field is not gonna be the damage. The take out the KO is now Dazzling Gleam. is not just a defensive terror, it's an offensive one. Double damage right on down. And it looks like this Dragonite hasn't locked into the extreme speed. It looks like it's going to be locking into something else. And it is that aerial is super effective into the Whimsicott. And what you've got to think, Luca has that bug terror type Iron Hands in the back. Going to be now weak to that aerial is as well. Absolutely massive. We still have two Pokemon for Luca. And with that Iron Hands returning, you do have that one turn of fake out that you can be bringing out. So if you are scared of that aerial ace, you can go ahead and fire off a fake out into that slot. But the dazzling gleams from this Maridon, maybe it's not going to be hitting super effective into this, but that is still going to be a lot of damage, even if it's not necessarily the most of that, the same amount that Luca was able to do. Since again, you are the assault vest instead. The damage output would be very different. Yeah, I think the big thing that you called here is how important 
important this fake out is in being able to stop this Dragonite moving this first turn. Draco Meteor coming out from the Ogapon. Not choice spec boosted though. Ogapon taking that quite comfortably as far as a Draco Meteor and returning with an Ivy Cudgel into that Dragonite, but not enough to pick up the knockout. That's going to be not nearly enough. No crit, no chance. We get another go around. It is not a priority move from the Dragonite. And Ogre Pond tends to be a little bit more on the speedier end, but taking so much. A dazzling thing to surely get off. So spiky shield on this turn. It'll be another Draco Meteor targeted into the slot. Not gonna get there. Now we have to see where things will be reacting. Aerial Ace targeted oh, into the Iron Hands nice. instead. 14 HP firing off with the Drain Punch. Two to one advantage now for Luca. That's a huge survival there. Big damage, but the Iron Hands just clutching out there, returning with a big knockout from that Drain Punch. Now in a position where Luca has two Pokemon to the one, but can the Iron Hands take a Dazzling Gleam? That's the big thing. The Ogre Pond definitely can, but what do you lock into? Do you prioritize getting rid of the Ogapon, locking in with that Draco Meteor, get rid of that, or do you go for the Dazzling Gleam? Here we are. A negative two, you need the most damage coming on out. Both Pokemon are gonna be holding on. And now Ivy Cudgel, this is gonna be the damage. Gets it down real low. It is gonna be follow-up. Drain Punch, we get one more go around to determine this match. Now we've seen the damage from that Dazzling Gleam. It's not gonna be enough to pick up either of these targets. And then you lock into the problem of which one do you pick? Do you just go for the follow me with Lucas Ogapon? Give the Iron Hands enough to close this out. I think we're looking at a critical hit. See if this can be the one that seals the deal. Or if Luca has done enough holding on through this match to grab it. We're not even going to wait for this. That is going to be the match locked in. And with that, Luca Cerebelli to be moving on to the next stage of competition with a nail biter of a series. We talk about top eight at the World Championships and the first one we feature here, 